This project is entitled The Economizer, Harnessing Waste Heat Using a Sterling Engine. Global warming is becoming an increasing problem in today's society. Global warming is believed to be caused by man-made CO2 emissions from sources such as burning coal to produce electricity and also from burning gasoline in our internal combustion engines of our cars. There are some ways we can contribute to helping global warming. Uh, some examples of this is using alternative energy sources such as hydro energy, uh, wind energy, solar energy and also geothermal energy. One way you can harness geothermal energy is by using an engine called a Stirling engine. The purpose of our project is to combine multiple technologies in order to harness wasted heat energy in a novel way. It was hypothesized that if the waste heat emitted by an object can be harnessed, then it be converted into a more useful form. And one way you can do this, as Darren said, is by using a Stirling engine. I will now explain to you how it is able to do this. So. One key aspect that a Stirling engine requires to run is a heat differential between the bottom and the top plate. The two main constituents of the Stirling engine which are essential is this foam displacer here, which is not airtight within this glass column, and this black power piston here. So assuming that there is a heat source coming from the bottom of the engine, if this foam displacer is at the top, then all the gas within here is being heated up. And if this gas remains at constant volume, so it is airtight, then the pressure of this gas will rise. This rise in pressure will exert a force on this black power piston and cause it to rise up. And as the black piston rises up, the displacer will now fall back down. Now, most of the gas inside this chamber is being exposed to the top plate, which is cooler, assuming we have the heat differential between the bottom and top plate. Now we have that heat differential, the gas is being cooler, its pressure is dropping, and this is going to create a vacuum inside the chamber. It's going to suck this black piston back down, thus completing the cycle. Some of the materials we chose to use for our engine include graphite power piston and a borosilicate cylinder. And the reason for that is graphite on borosilicate is actually the best natural lubricant. The graphite will actually wear off and form ball bearings between the, the very non-porous surface of the borosilicate glass. We also use borosilicate glass, also known as Pyrex, for our main displacer column. And that's so that the general public could see the workings of the engine and also because Pyrex is very heat tolerable, so it won't shatter when we heat it up and cool it down. Uh, one of the more important materials we use are aluminum for specific heat and emissivity values once we had to actually anodize the bottom of the engine black. And the reason we anodize the bottom is so that it's a black body and is able to absorb all the radiation which falls upon it. We also used a brass flywheel, so we have a brass edging, so that the flywheel would have momentum and be able to complete the cycle. So once we determined the materials we wish to use, then we began designing the pieces of our engine based on another engine named the MM7 model. Uh, we used a series of hand drawings at the beginning, and then we turned those drawings into AutoCAD drawings, which are what the machinists actually directly used to cut the pieces for us. Uh, with our, our agreement with our company that we uh, worked with, ABCO, uh, we were not allowed to use the actual uh, lathe machines and other cutting machines for the metal, but we were allowed to be present in the laboratory as they worked. So once the machinists had all our drawings, they cut the pieces for us and then we got the pieces back. We put them all together and began uh, testing our engine and tweaking it and we got some very notable results. The first two main results of our project is that we were actually able to design and manufacture a Stirling engine and that it was able to convert heat and mechanical energy. But we didn't really want to just show that a Stirling engine could indeed do this because it is indeed an old technology. So one way in which we furthered our project is by generating electricity. And we did this by using an electric motor. So what we did is we used the heat conversion of the Stirling engine to power this electric motor which generated about 0.06 volts of push. So then our final application of the Stirling engine is that we actually incorporated it into a model car. And what we did is we bolted the Stirling engine on here and we heated up the base plate and we hooked up a pulley system from the Stirling engine to the wheels of this car. And the heat differential we achieved to run the car is suffice to say that we can actually run a car off the heat of the road with incorporation of a cooling system. And Daryl will now explain to you another way which we plan to further our project. A further automotive application for our Stirling engine would be to build a model that can actually be applied into a hybrid technology in a car. Gasoline electric cars, we could use a Stirling engine and power it from the heat given off by the gasoline engine in order to charge the batteries of that car. 
We'll now show you a video of our final results.